point. All right. Hi everybody, Chuck and John here. Okay, um, you know you got the mix right on these when they can do this for 25 hours. We started this test at 8 o'clock yesterday morning. It's now 9.05, so it's a little over 25 hours. We had Peter Linderman and Aaron come out and uh, look at this. So you can see when you got your mix right in a real crystal battery what it can do. It'll go to that level and hold it. And these are 12 volt panels that John designed and they pull a little over an amp each so it's about two and a half amps at the start of this. And you can see that's a lot of lights in a 24 hour period. That's not a lead acid curve. Any one of you guys that's ran tests on lead acid has been watching this knows that's not a lead acid curve. But this one's happy spot is about three volts and it just keeps running out at that. So we just wanted to share that with you. Thanks for watching. Okay everybody, Chuck again here. And wanted to show you something here. Here we got the two Marcus Reed cells. Um, the one that Marcus sent us there, piece of his material. Uh, another one of his cells is one of the oscillators I built. And this one over here is with the new crystal mix that we're using with the lead and lead. Uh, but the two dissimilar metals are not lead in there. And this one's been running for three weeks. Don't charge it. Um, that's just how it runs. Well, I'll open it up eventually and see what's happening in there. Um, but as you can see, it really does give off useful light, and this has been three weeks on this one. And once again, those are the Marcus Reed cells. So just wanted to thank everybody for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Bye. Okay, one more thing to add is um, this battery. You can see the water has been sucked back inside, and the test got over a long time ago. But um, it was only charged for about 10 to 20 minutes with Peter here because I wanted to show him what the uh, crystal did. And uh, so basically, we took the one amp hour out of it only down to a certain level here and uh, we took that for what's the time there Chuck how many amp hours uh, 3.6 so 3.6 on that charge now later on I'll be explaining to you what the chemical actually is and how you make this up but you gotta remember this is not this cell was taken apart by me and I packed the crystal in it. So it's totally different. It's a totally different looking battery than what everybody suspects. And I'll be adding some pictures here to show you the plates and the crystal. So I'll be back when I do that and then that'll be the end of this film because I think that you should understand by now that this is a totally different battery. Okay, you can say that, Jack. Okay. Um, you can see we have our three impedance changes, but right here you can see some variations. And what that was was when Peter Linderman was here and we were running the test, um, squeezing the battery, picking it up, and, and looking at it, John was showing him how it was starting to pull the water back into the crystal. And so you see that it changes when it moves and that'll also happen uh, with temperature changes uh, if you watched any of our early work you'll see that the some of the crystals batteries that we experimented with uh, over the last couple of years showed a lot of activity as the as the crystals uh, were under uh, a load of an oscillator so um, just wanted to show you that to you and thanks for watching Okay, I'll be back in a minute, and now that this battery sat with no fluid in it, it's been about, what, 18 hours? At least that, yeah. Yeah. On this, and of course, it's a uh, West Mountain discharger. I'm going to come back, and I'm going to put it where the uh, crystal oscillators would run it, 
<clears throat> so I'll save this curb and I'll start a new one and I'll come back and show you what that looks like all right I want you to watch this very closely because as I said I was coming back with a dry crystal battery running at 100 milliamps and you can see what the curve is and Chuck and I will let this go a little bit longer because where you think there is no power there is you just need to tap it right so once again I'm gonna say that I'll be showing you some pictures of what the crystal looks like under the microscope along with some lead plates that have been reclaimed so you can see where the sulfate is in the plate once again you cannot do this with a lead acid battery it would be totally dead you wouldn't get a thing out of it because that's the way a lead acid battery works sulfates the plates nothing moves out and so you can see here that this crystal has the sulfuric acid locked up and you can see what the curve is at 100 milliamps after the total discharge curve of one amp for over three hours on this so I'll be back Hi everybody Chuck and John again okay so we got the the crystal under the microscope and wanted to show you what you can see here is the white part is the crystal that's dry up on top and down here where it's real dark is where the crystal's still wet and you can see some drops of water in there and the yellow you see here is the sulfuric acid that's actually locked up inside the crystal so you can see on this dry part as the water gets sucked back into it it traps the sulfuric acid in there and we just wanted to show you this on there thanks for watching okay hi everybody Chuck and John again just wanted to show you a different portion of that same crystal that we showed you in the battery once again the locked up sulfuric acid and these are the water droplets that you can see here and the crystal itself and where it's still wet and the plates underneath um, this is uh, the lead and lead um, but as you put the water back into it and then charge it it comes to the surface yeah it'll switch it, it'll switch and you won't see this it'll just be basically the the, the grayish crystal it'll, it'll look like this with the water on top and then as you discharge it it starts pulling it back in and you'll notice that it, it the crystals retain the water they pull it back in they pull the sulfuric acid back into it and that's what we wanted to show you yeah we will uh, give you the mixture that we used in this Chuck's gonna move it around a little bit so he can get he's got to move it around underneath this because the light interferes here once again you can see all the water droplets and that's the hydrate in it yeah and the uh, the odd color is because it locks up the SO4 in the crystal it uh, is quite capable of growing in the air Chuck moves this around kind of hard to see this because you know we're trying to there you go that's a good portion of a good lock up right here in this this section to the left and uh, so it's not like Chuck and I don't do the research on this and know how this all works we do and so once again I'm just going to tell you that if you work and understand what the principle of this is you will find out that the lead is already reduced to the lowest form 
on the table and that it's very important to keep that sulfate off the lead plates if you want an extended range like this because then the battery cannot stop producing power it's going to be at a lower level but it's going to produce power all along and it's something you really have to do the tests on and understand what's going on in the chemical to even begin to understand what is happening here so we'll be back okay one more thing to add here this is you saw the first curve and now it's coming down to the crystal level and it's just going to stay there it's going to be flat out forever and so I'm glad that I could share this information with you and if you do this battery right you will have a great system to run lighting and oscillators and radios and everything without worrying about the power so I'm glad I could share this with you and thank you for viewing talk to you later